Good morning, everyone. Uh, so first of all, before I start, thank you so much for having me here. And also, the people who are sitting in the left, if I don't look on you, that means I'm not ignoring, uh, ignoring you, but because the microwave, so microphone. So don't like say, oh, why you don't look to us? So um, first of all, before I start, since you all talked about hope, I want to each of you think one word, what hope means to you, one word. In your mind, write it down and just think about it. Also, there are one ancient philosopher from Greece, uh, his name is Tyler, he said, not matter what happened to you, it matter what come your reaction to it. So, life teaching us a lot. And today from the people who spoke before of me, I noticed that they mentioned nature and mentioned everything God, God created it and we learned from it. So today, I would love to mention some stuff so we could all of us learn from it, you and me. So I wanted to ask you, if you planted a planet in a box, closed box, you put seed and this plant started growing up. In this box, it have just one small hole on the top, but everything is covered. What do you think the plant will do? We'll go to the small hole in the box. Why? Because seeing the light. And the light is important in our life and how we could see the light. When something happens to you, trust me, there are always light behind it. But you need to look deeply to find it. And sometimes, as we are human, we are not patient. And we need to be patient when something happens to us because that happen is for a reason. It happened to us to learn lesson. So I would love to share my story a little bit with you because I think uh, will help me and help you. And I'm standing to you and if I told you I have 65 surgery on just my face. My body does not have any surgery, just my face. You say, oh my God, 65? Yes, it's 65. I got my accident through suicide bomb in Iraq. We was playing volleyball match and car drove to the stadium and he blew himself. And he killed 16 people and 56 got injured. After that, my dad took me to the small clinic. We have a small clinic because I grew up in a small village. It does not have hospital, just mainly small clinic, like two rooms. So when a doctor saw me, he told my dad, go ahead, take care of your other kids. Qusay, uh, half an hour will, will die. So they put me where the deaf people should be. It's not refrigerators, you think, like here, in very advanced uh, technology in America, no. Just throw you on the floor, and God be with you. So they put me in their room, and they start bringing bodies above of me, beside of me. Six hours later, my dad came to take me home. And that is the traditional in Arabic to wash the body and take it to the cemetery. You know, each, each culture that has its own traditional how to bury the body. So I heard my dad's voice and I said, Dad, don't leave me, I will die. And he said, oh my God, my son is still alive. So he put me in a car and he could not drive. So he asked one of the neighbor if he could help drive. So the neighbor did and then they started drive to Mosul, the downtown, which is 65 miles away. On the way, we met American soldiers. And they, when they saw my injuries, they took me to their base for treatment. I just got to the helicopter and I just felt uh, they start cutting my uniform for the game. And I just, the last word I told them, my stomach does not have any problem, 
the problem is just my faith. And I went in a coma for 12 days. And after that, my family started looking for me because they didn't get any number or any email or anything to contact with American surgery. So uh, they thought I died and American surgery threw me somewhere. And 2006, 2007 is the most difficult life for the Iraqi people because militias and bad people start controlling everything. So then my family did the funeral for me and they got the death certificate from Iraqi government. And when he tried to call back, he, my dad, he didn't believe I'm still alive. Barely we convinced him I'm still alive. So he come and he took me home, but after a while. So I don't want to take all the time to, to, to talk about it. But so, and I stayed home for two years doing nothing, just like basically, I want to do something, but no any resources or any organizations or any people beside my mom and dad to help me. So, thank God one day I was watching TV and got commercials and they said, if you are injured from war, call this phone number, we'll take you to Jordan to do surgery. So, thank God I, buzz, um, I pressed the button on the remote and my brother helped me to dial the number and I went to Jordan for treatment with Doctor Without Borders. And after that, I became patient counselor working with them after I did also a few surgeries there. And I came to the US 2012. And when I came here, I, they dropped me off in an airport in New York. And hell, I don't know where I'm going. I walked from the airplane, no speaking English, no word, just hi, how are you? Nothing else. So. Thank God I met Arabic women, and they put your badge saying, she does not speak English, good luck. <laughs> so, well, she, she looks like she knows I'm Arabic, so she said, do you need help? I said, oh my God, yes. So they gave me bag uh, in the Jordan airport, and they say you need to give it to the, when you get to New York, you give them this bag. I don't know what the hell the bag it have, like, I don't know, just carrying it with me. So I gave to her, so she called, and uh, she met the people supposed to meet me outside the airport. And I slept one night in New York, and I come to my new hometown, Austin, Texas. After difficulty getting here, 20 days doing nothing, I got belt depression again, because I didn't see any people, and I wanted a human interaction. So I asked my person who was to care of me that time, my caseworker, I said, I could not stay here. I'm coming to America, not to the jail. So, because when I was in my apartment, they locked the door and take the key with them. And they told me, do not leave the apartment. So, guess what? The first place I came, I came to this church. The reason why I love it so much. It's impacted me a lot. I started learning ESL in this location. And Four months later, I went to Austin Community College. I got my associate. I was in the keynote speaker. I was the top student in the Austin Community College. And I moved to University of Texas. And I got my dual degree in psychology and social work. And I got my master, and right now I'm doing PhD. <laughs> I'm The reason why I mentioned those achievements, those achievements does not will come if I don't hope, I have hope. I met many people on the way told me you are not able, trust me. And they came, told me after I achieved what I wanna achieve. They told me who was wrong, prove us wrong, you did it. So in your life, you will soon find a lot of people who tell you you are not able, or you don't have hope. Do not listen to those people. Listen to yourself. <laughs> so hope give us life again. If you have cell phone, I'm sure all of you are using cell phone right now. If you don't charge it, you are not able to use it. So hope charge you, give you power. 
Sometimes you feel sad, mad, angry. You are allowed to do that. But do not start filling your brain with negative thoughts because that hope will go away. Always say, okay, that happened for a reason. When something broke or got, like if you broke a cup from your home, why you get mad to it? You brought this cup. Why you get like, oh my God. No, you will bring another one. It's not worth it to kill many cells in your brain for that stupid cup. So keep hope as your key to the success, to the love. Because when you say, I hope, I will see you. We say that always when we call somebody we didn't see for a while. I hope I will see you soon because you love this person. Hope give us love and care. And I will tell you something, another thing to keep in your mind for the future. Do not look on the person from where he or she come from or what color they have. Care about the heart, where their heart go. A heart is important. For me, when I see a person, it does matter. I just see their heart. If their heart is beautiful, they will be my friends. If not, I say I'm sorry. I could not be your friend. That means I'm not saying like I could not be your friend because you are color or your religion or where you come from. No, because you don't treat people right. And that is my legacy in life. So I think I don't want to take more time. I have 10 minutes, but <laughs> I hope I will see some of you afterward. And I hope I ask you something today because uh, the life is a beautiful. It's worth it to live. And all of us, we go to through difficulty. Imagine your sh yourself riding a ship in the, war in the ocean. Do you think that ship will go smooth all the time? If you think that, you are wrong, unfortunately. You will get some there pump or water like wave, but in the end, you will get to the end and then you get out from the ship. This is how our life and how we should manage it. So yes, you will get difficulty in life, but let's hope is the key to get out. So I wish you, I hope all of you being great and in being peace. And thank you so much again for having me here. Thank you.